So you know how technology has always played a role in politics? From the printing press to radio, television, the internet, social media, tech has always been an important part. Well, guess what? Now it's time for artificial intelligence to step into the political arena. And that matters to you because the way that we handle these changes collectively is gonna influence your everyday life, your voting rights, and the future that we're gonna leave the next generation. So it's important that you understand that artificial intelligence has the ability to single you out, understand your preferences, and give you a specific political message, custom tailored, crafted specifically to you to sway your opinion. And for good reason, there's a growing concern about how deep fakes and how artificial intelligence are gonna play out in the upcoming election. And misinformation, fake news, it's not going anywhere. In fact, it might get worse, although there's some reason to think that we might have tools that can help combat it too. So we'll have to see how it all plays out. And that's why in this video, I wanna talk about all things that are government and political. And let's start by thinking about what the government might look like in 2030. So here's what political scientists and artificial intelligence experts think the government might be like in the year 2030. Now they suspect that there'll be a lot of discord about where to draw the line on human augmentation. And that'll go along with issues of personal data and genomics. And some expect that owning your own DNA, the information that makes you you, will end up looking a bit more like property rights in the legal books. Because that would give similar ownership like you do over your property and how you wanna use that information. Some suspect that in 2030, the arts and culture programs will actually flourish. The government will be collecting a lot of taxes. There'll be a lot of fear of robots and jobs being displaced and that that human aspect might be emphasized again. And that might be paid for by something like a robot tax or an artificial intelligence tax where incredibly wealthy companies become so grotesquely rich off the technology that there's sort of a pushback where they try to tax them more. Some people think there'll be a lot of nuance about where the government can collect data from and how it's used. For example, can they tap into a sewer system and pinpoint it to a specific building if there's a virus outbreak, something like that? Or is that too far? What about video cameras that are looking at the public street? Where can facial recognition identify someone and who can know who that person is? There will probably be a lot of debates too just because of the way the demographics are growing. Not as many people are having children, not as many people are immigrating to America. And there's government programs where pensions and things like that are actually guaranteed for life. And what if life expansion goes up into the hundreds, maybe even 150 years old? So what are your thoughts about what the government might be debating and talking about in the year 2030? Leave it in the comments below. So now let's talk about persuasion because early in the video, I kind of hinted that AI in this next election might be more persuasive than it's ever been before. So in case you're thinking that you might be too human or too smart to be persuaded by an AI, here's some research I wanna show you from Stanford. This professor did a controlled study to see if the current AI, ChatGPT, could actually persuade somebody to believe something better than an expert human. And some of the big political issues that they tackled were the ones people don't budge much, like gun control, environmentalism, and parental leave. So the test worked like this. They asked ChatGPT, to write a persuasive text, a message they could give to someone. And then they had human experts try to do the same thing. And it turns out that the AI was pretty good at getting people to change their mind already. And this technology is only gonna get better. So in this graph, you can see that higher scores indicate participants became more supportive of the policy. So researchers concluded that we should be careful how AI is used today in this next upcoming election. So now let's talk about some ways if you see some political information that you might be able to check the image to see if it's a deep fake. For instance, have you seen some of those photos that were fabricated by deep fakes of Donald Trump being arrested recently? So if you zoom in here, pay attention to the details and how the hand is constructed. Although this won't last forever, hands still are a bit tricky for most deep fake diffusion models. If there happens to be text on a sign and it doesn't look legible, that's another big red flag. Also, take a hard look at the background elements and the people. Do they really look like they have the right kind of depth? Do they blend together in any kind of weird ways that just don't seem natural? Man, that's not a foolproof plan, but just in case it's low hanging fruit, you don't wanna be caught just sharing something that's really obviously fake. And to be honest, the technology is moving so fast, I don't even know how long this will last for before it truly is above human recognition, but while it's still noticeable, pay attention. So as long as we're talking about where the limitations of AI should be in terms of what the government has control over, let's talk military for a second. So NATO is working on a very important agreement between the United States and China about where to draw the line on artificial intelligent military technology. And this of course has a direct impact on your safety. And because these two countries have the most artificial intelligent capabilities, it's really gonna set the tone for the rest of the world. I mean, highly advanced autonomous weapon systems are just so dangerous if they're actually let into the wild and start to get used. And the whole debate is somewhat frustrating because it's like, how should we control our human, you know, automated killing machines? And they're like, 
with responsibility, but then like, why are you building it in the first place? But of course, that's just not how the arms race works. So you gotta do something. And the first step to bringing everybody to the table is to find some common ground. And to do this, NATO made a point to make sure that China knew that they weren't considered an adversary, but they also said they recognized the challenge and the fact that China has put so much money into artificial intelligence and high-end military equipment. And on top of it, they're one of the countries that's growing their nuclear arsenal. But there is some hope, because back in February, there was a group of countries that got together to talk about how artificial intelligence in terms of military should be used responsibly. And from that, there was a document signed called the Call to Action, and that meant that even if a machine makes a decision to kill someone, there has to be somebody responsible for that decision. It was a document of accountability, which is a first step. So look, whenever a major decision, especially one that might end somebody's life is made, you have to be very careful about the bias. Now there is always bias in human systems and there's probably always gonna be bias in AI systems too. So it's good to be aware that there are some concerns that are being raised about large language models like ChatGPT, in a sense rewriting history or the politics that come out of them, either being neutered or leaning in one direction or some kind of bias. Now some go as far to say that these major systems were trained intentionally, I kind of doubt that, but that is a possibility. And there will be many, many competing systems out there, and certainly some of them over time will be trained specifically for a bias, for an agenda, for some kind of nefarious reason. These systems are so smart, they're so confident in their answers, even when they're like hallucinating or confabulating, that they might very well come up with something that has a political slant and has a lot of good evidence behind it. It's cherry picked, but you wouldn't know it because it's so smart at putting together its argument. And discerning the truth is quickly gonna be something that the human brain just isn't capable of handling. And there will be people who are gonna to wanna to exploit that bug and turn it into a feature to benefit them. Now, one step we can take today is to start checking the data that we're actually feeding into these systems to see what kind of bias might already be implicit in the data and that the AI might be picking up as it's trained on it. And another thing we can do as individuals and citizens is we should notify people that maybe aren't already up on this and say, hey, do you realize that these systems can be biased and you should take everything with a grain of salt? Do you know that they can hallucinate answers? It's not a Google search that gives you a link. This is something that is generated, a large language model, meaning that it's just predicting word by word from a huge statistical model, a huge latent space, what to write. And it happens to be incredibly interesting and accurate and helpful in most cases, but it's not the truth. So do you think that people that represent us in Congress recognize that? I doubt it, and I have now some evidence that shows me that I'm right. They don't know. So Fox News did this really interesting interview where they just started randomly taking people in Congress and asking them, how much do you know about artificial intelligence? And also, how confident are you? On one to 10, give me a number. And even though all of them recognize that the potential is so great that it could end humanity or it could create more economic growth than we've ever seen in the history of the country before, that they had basically no idea. Among everybody who was interviewed in that Fox segment, only one of them gave themselves a five out of 10, and that person had a computer science degree. Everyone else, significantly less than him. So the fact is, Congress has to deepen their knowledge about this. This is, you should treat it like an existential crisis. I mean, step one, they should bring in advisors, they should spend more time on it themselves, but also we need to start thinking outside of the box of how do we integrate government into a much tighter system, something that moves much quicker, reacts much quicker, and has a good understanding of the risks and benefits. And the headline that Fox ran with was a quote from somebody who was like, I actually struggle to get logged into my Facebook. And we're like, you have members of Congress that don't know how to log into Zoom or Facebook. Okay, now you're gonna vote for AI bills? Great. But if there's a silver lining, it's good that they at least know that they don't know anything about AI and they're open to learning. So, you know, it's not like they were like, I got it all in the bag. That would have made me even more worried. So 